Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be going over the changes coming to Warrior in Final Fantasy XIV's next expansion, Stormblood. Now keep in mind that the footage and my play experience is coming out of the recent North American media tour where I actually got hands-on with sort of an early access version of Stormblood. So I'm not a Warrior expert, but I'll do my best to bring to you the information that I was able to gleam from the little bit of playtime that I had. Now keep in mind that any numerical values, animations, the way skills interact, pretty much everything is still subject to change. It could change by the time you get your hands on it on June 16th, so keep that in mind. Before we get into Warrior's actual skills, just a little bit of a reminder, the parry stat is gone and accuracy is gone. For parry, it's being replaced by tenacity, which increases your damage dealt and decreases damage taken, and that is a tank-only stat. You can still parry attacks, you just can't improve the rate at which you parry through gear or materia. It's only going to be a flat rate, plus there's a cross-roll skill that can increase that opportunity as well. Raw intuition, still as good as ever. So what is the same about Warrior? A lot of their old skills actually had some quality of life stuff to bring them up to speed with their new gauge, but we'll see what we can glean from what they actually have that's the same. So their Butcher's Block combo is the same, but Skull Sunder and Butcher's Block generate Beast Gauge, which we'll talk about later. Storm's Eye combo, now this is where things start to change a little bit. Maim gives the Slashing debuff now, and Storm's Eye gives the old Maim damage buff. Also, Maim and Eye generate Beast Gauge. Storm's Path is still in the game, however, it no longer has the debuff component that decreases the amount of damage that the target deals. It now strictly heals the warrior, and additionally, it generates twice as much beast gauge as Eye and Butchers. Berserk is still here, but it no longer pacifies the warrior, has a shorter cooldown, but the attack boost has been lowered by 20%. It also no longer generates Wrath or Abandon. You have Overpower, Tomahawk, and Thrill of Battle, which are largely the same. Defiance and Deliverance are mostly the same conceptually, but we have to go over those a little bit more in depth when we talk about their new gauge. You have Unchained still, you have Home Gang still, you have Vengeance and Raw Intuition still, but neither of them generate Wrath or Abandon anymore. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. And of course, you still have Equilibrium. Now, there are a few things that are gone from Warrior. For example, Fracture, Foresight, Brutal Swing, Mercy Stroke, and Bloodbath are all gone. Sorry. So the major new mechanic for Warriors is called the Beast Gauge. Now, Beast Gauge is only active when you're in Defiance or Deliverance, and instead of Wrath or Abandon, they now allow you to generate Beast Gauge. Defiance and Deliverance also give bonuses depending on how much Beast Gauge you have. For example, you get 1% parry per 10 gauge when in Defiance, and you get 1% critical hit chance per 10 Beast Gauge when you're in Deliverance. But keep in mind, swapping stances cuts your gauge in half, so make sure those swaps are a little bit intelligent. Just to be clear, Raw Intuition, Vengeance, and Berserk, I said earlier they don't generate Wrath or Abandon, they also do not generate Beast Gauge. You'll be using those cooldowns on their own, not just to build gauge, kind of like how people used to do it before. As for Defiance and Deliverance's major abilities, Inner Beast, Fell Cleave, Steel Cyclone, and Decimate, they're all pretty much the same, but they now cost 50 Beast Gauge to use. Additionally, Inner Beast and Fell Cleave are both one button that changes automatically. No more using macros to do that. So when you're in Defiance, it'll be an Inner Beast button. When you switch to Deliverance, the Inner Beast button becomes the Fell Cleave button. The same goes for Steel Cyclone and Decimate. Now, Infuriate is still there, but instead of generating Wrath or Abandon, this one does generate 50 Beast Gauge upon use. Also, one of Warrior's only traits is that anytime you use Inner Beast, Fell Cleave, Steel Cyclone, or Decimate, Infuriate's cooldown goes down by 5 seconds. So, you're going to be Infuriating far more frequently. And as mentioned before, don't forget, all of your Tier 2 and 3 combo abilities are what you use to generate Beast Gauge outside of Infuriate. Now, even though all of those old abilities use Beast Gauge, you do have some new abilities that use Beast Gauge as well. The first one is Onslaught, which is the gap-closing ability, the charge attack, you've seen in some of the recent gameplay showcases. It's got a 15-second cooldown, only 100 potency, increased enmity, and costs 20 gauge. You'd have to be pretty desperate to use that, because Tomahawk and then running up to an enemy is usually more than sufficient. But maybe there's going to be some use for using Onslaught to close the gap so you can get in and use your melee combos faster? I don't know, it's, um, it's a tough call because that's not a lot of potency. You also got a new ability called Upheaval, which sits on a 30 second cooldown. This one has 300 potency, and the potency is at its maximum when you're at max HP. So the lower your HP, the less damage that Upheaval deals. That also costs 20 Beast Gauge. 
This next new ability is called Inner Release, and it's a shared button and cooldown with Unchained. So just like with uh, Decimate and Steel Cyclone and Felcleave and Inner Beast, when you're in Defiance, the button will be Unchained. When you're in Deliverance, the button will become Inner Release. Inner Release costs 20 gauge, but cuts the beast gauge cost of all your abilities in half for 20 seconds. With this, you could get off six Felcleaves back to back. It looks pretty cool. Another little tidbit about it is it also nullifies stuns, sleeps, binds, heavies, and knockbacks. So if you want those fell cleaves, not much is going to stop you from getting them. And a final new ability, one that actually comes a few levels before inner release, is called Shake It Off. This one doesn't actually cost any beast gauge, but it removes almost all detrimental effects from a warrior. It can even be used while under statuses that make you unable to use actions. So I'm wondering, if you're going to give that as a new ability, are there going to be cases to use it very frequently? I hope so. That's the majority of the changes to Warrior. I mean, most of their old abilities were just updated to work with Beast Gauge, and they had some of their utilities brought down. I mean, they lost the major raid utility and not having the damage reduction on Storm's Path. They lost some of their sustain and burst from losing both Blood Bass, uh, Blood Bath and Internal Release, which is no longer a cross-class skill they can access, which should give it some balance compared to before. It's still incredibly strong. It's true to that whole, like, having a, a deep inner demon to conquer and control like the Warrior story actually promotes, and on top of some new cross-roll stuff, you do have some decent utilities. It's just not the flat damage reduction that Storm's Path had before. So before we wrap up this video, let's go over what the tank crossroll abilities actually are. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you lost Foresight, but you did get Rampart as a crossroll ability, so I'd say Warriors made out better on that deal. Uh, Provoke, Convalescence, and Awareness are all crossroll now. You have Anticipation, which is basically Dark Knight's old Dark Dance skill, so that's 30% parry. Reprisal is also there, another Dark Knight skill that got converted into a crossroll ability. It now no longer requires parry to activate, although not like a warrior would have had trouble with that. It simply reduces the damage dealt by the target by 10% for 5 seconds. It's basically disable, but tanks are the ones using it. I also mentioned that you lost Brutal Swing. Low Blow is now your stun option. It's off global cooldown with no potency, and it's in the crossroll system. As a tank, if you want to silence, you also have Interject. Same deal, has no potency, it's just an off global cooldown silence in the crossroll system. You also got Ultimatum for an AoE Provoke. Curious if there's going to be many scenarios where that's that useful, because I see a lot of players who are perfectly fine picking up AoE ads now. So, we'll see. Maybe it'll be good for, like, if you have, like, regen on you or something when a bunch of ads spawn. That'd be the number one scenario I'd imagine it would be used. And finally, you got Shirk, which transfers 25% of your enmity on a target to another player. So, for me, that sounds like it's to make tank swapping easier or maybe to keep your combos going without needing you to to force yourself into an enmity combo i don't know I, I gotta see the applicable use i can think of the tank swapping scenario along with keeping the combos but i'm not sure how many people are really struggling with that so we'll see how important shirk ends up being overall they took the things that made warrior fun and made them more prevalent. Now, I don't see the whole six fell cleave thing being super in meta, uh, just because you go out of your way to use so much beast gauge on just that. I mean, think about it. That would mean you'd have to be in deliverance pretty much the entire time, because if you're in defiance and you switch to deliverance, you're already cutting your gauge in half right there. So you'd have to generate the 100 gauge, then prep like a storm's path or something, then use inner release, then storm's path to get back up to 100, then fell cleave twice, infuriate fell cleave four times. It's cool to do and maybe at the very beginning of a fight as an off tank, but on top of that, you're then not doing any upheavals because you can't use the bone you can't use the beast gauge on those upheavals, and upheaval is pretty strong as well. So I, I don't know. I gotta see I gotta let the warriors who are actually warriors do all the theory crafting and whatnot, but at least it's cool. And I don't see warriors falling out of meta. I do want to see how the whole removal of the path element affects their place in the meta, though. Just because it was something that was so valuable before, I want to see how the meta shifts when warriors don't have that tool available. But like I said, I'll let the people who actually play Warrior do all that, because they're way more knowledgeable in this stuff than I am. So Zeno, Layla, get to it. I know you guys got some stuff that you're ready to do. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for all the latest Stormblood news, information, guides, everything. Also, be sure to check out some of the other videos that were put out by other content creators who attended the media tour. I'll include them in the description of the video below. Anyway, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.